Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I know I don't normally do tutorials or stuff like this, but I've been experimenting in After Effects with uh, different methods to try to get the most accurate dark saber possible. I've also been messing around with the Kylo Ren lightsaber. Um, I haven't got that one fully right yet. I might upload a video on that once I have that ready. Leave a comment down below if you want to see the Kylo Ren saber. But today we are going to be making the dark saber, as you can see here. This is kind of more or less the final result. Um, but there are different versions that you can make. You can make it more accurate to the films and uh, TV shows, or you can make it a little bit more realistic or make it just look better for your shot. Um, this could be used for a still frame or it could be used for like a movie or a short film that you're making. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. And we're going to want to start out with a solid, just of any color that's not black or white, but that's easy on the eyes, just so we can make sure that we are compositing it correctly as we go along. Then make two black solids. Now, I should preface this. Um, if you are making it for a movie you would want to mask out your Darksaber prop first and then use that mask for what we're going to do. But you should still do this part first just to see what you're getting into, um, see what the saber is going to look like, and then you could apply that mask to this effect depending on how far you go in before you start masking. So I'm just going to start out by masking out a simple just dark dark saber shaped uh, object here um, so this is the part where you would be you would have your your movie you have your wooden dark saber prop or an ex like a Hasbro one or maybe an expensive one you got off Etsy or something and then after you do your scene you would just trace out the edges of the blade itself and then take that mask and do this but for this part, I'm just going to make a make a simple sh shape here and just use that because I don't have any footage for that. Um, so yeah, do that. Then on the other one, use the Saber plugin. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the accurate one first, and then the second one looks better. So stick around for that. Um, so just use the default one. Make it white. Um, render settings. Now, if you're doing this for real, you would want to leave it black and then take this and turn it into an ad transfer mode, or I guess a screen. Ad is usually better. Um, but for right now, to show it, it's better if I just turn it transparent. So, but if you're doing this, let me turn that off for now. If you're doing this, make sure to use the ad or screen transfer mode. Don't ever just use Saber's default transparent. Uh, setting in the render settings. All right, so then take the mask, copy it, Control C on the mask thing, and then paste it onto your saber layer, and then go into customize core layer masks. So now it'll go around whatever mask you have. So that's why you would trace out your saber, your blade of your dark saber, and then apply this, and then it would it's just gonna follow the blade. Now what most people would do, they would just take this or they would take um, like this one, make it white, and then they would leave it like that. But that's really not accurate to what we see in the films and shows. There is distortion, but it's only on the inside. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me make sure we got all that. Good. Just check and make sure your compositing is good and you don't need to invert any of your masks. Um, then duplicate these. Um, it's probably better to name your layers, but I don't. I'm too lazy. So then you're gonna want to take the the duplicated saber layer. Um, you can keep it like that. Um, go, you're gonna want to go to distortion, core distortion, distortion type to energy, and then just up the amount. And you can mess with the scale and the speed. I think that scale is pretty good. You don't want to do it too much. It is pretty much localized to the edges. 
Um, sometimes it's distributed all over, but you can't really do that with this effect. It's pretty much localized to the edges unless you just go overboard with it. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it uh, like this. Mess around, see what uh, looks best. You have to do that part here because now we're gonna make it so that we're gonna localize the distortion to just the black center. So you're gonna wanna hone in, change this part to exactly how you want it at this step. Um, but the the other part, the outside glow, that can be done later. Um, so now, once you have that, you're gonna wanna. Sorry, my my headphones just turned off because they don't have any audio. It freaked me out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's still good. Um, so then you're gonna wanna pre-compose this. Good. Um, and then you're going to. Go to go to this mask, same either one, they have the same mask. Control C and then go on this pre comp, control V. Now the distortion is only in the middle. And that's pretty much the effect. But if you want to do the outside a different type, you have to do that now. I personally I think something like the Patronus, obviously you can go in and make it fully custom exactly what you're looking for. I think the Patronus looks a little bit better. The smoke is a little bit too much, so you could go always go into distortion, glow distortion, and just lower that. Maybe make it smoke instead of fluid, and then something like that. We're gonna. I know this isn't really black in the middle. We're gonna fix that next. So you're gonna want to pick whatever you think looks best, and make that your outside glow. Now you're gonna want to finalize your outside glow. Alright, so once, I'm gonna just going to leave it uh, most film accurate. But that looks pretty good so far. And it's still coming to the outside. So, now, you're going to want to pre-compose the original layers. Compose it all into one. Oh, my phone's ringing. Sorry. And then, now that you have this, go to Effect. Uh, color correction, levels, make sure that's so good. And then you're just going to want to increase the input black, decrease the output black, just get it how you want it. Um, and some images, it's really just the center is the darkest, and then like the outsides kind of have like a gradient of gray going in like this. So if you're going for that look, you can leave it like that, but I generally... I'm gonna add a little bit more black to it. You can do so much that it. Ooh, whoa, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> like a lightsaber, but it's in a dark saber shape. Um, but yeah, you don't want to go too overboard like that, cause then there's really no. I mean, I guess you could. It really depends on what you're going for, what looks good in your footage, or on your image. But yeah, I would say something like this. Also, for your filming, I would not recommend using, like, uh, I mean, it would look better, but using, like, an LED darksaber, one that has lights on it, or having somebody shine a light on your actor while they're moving it, it would look better because it's like the light is shining on the person, but technically the darksaber actually takes in light from the surrounding area, and it makes it darker. So the only reason it looks like it glows is because it's like sucking in the light faster and faster. It's a black hole basically is what it is. Um, so yeah, it might make people really close to it look brighter, but it's taking light from other areas and bringing it to them. So that's the only reason that would happen. Um, so just, just pro tip if you don't want any fanboys in your comments yelling at you. But yeah, that's pretty much the look we're going for. Um, so now that you see the final result for yours, you could alter the settings that I have so you don't have to do this all again. You could just look at this, alter the settings that you have to tone it in, hone it in, tone it, ease it in, make it how you want it. And so yeah, save you a step of fiddling and then pre-composing and then doing it all again. You can just look at this one and then make sure you alter yours accordingly to how you like it. 
But yeah, that's basically it. Um, so yeah, if you would want to do that, Darksaber image, or if you're doing an image, you would go through and find find the one that looks the best, the best frame out of this, with like the most lightning-y parts. If you were doing a frame, you might want to just up the the distortion on the core on the duplicate layer from earlier. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I am experimenting with a Kylo Ren saber using a similar technique of two saber layers. Um, one, one solid saber to give the fluid core with just a slight distortion on it because Kylo Ren saber is basically just a long, like, liquidy core and then it has, like, sparks on it and, like, a flared tip. So I would do, like, one solid layer, lightsaber layer with, like, the fluid in it and then another layer of, like, the more sparky stuff coming off and then, like, a thinner, like, fiery tip that he has. So I'm experimenting with that. I haven't gotten it quite, quite right yet. But when I do, if you guys comment down below, I will make a video out of it. So yeah, this looks pretty good. I, if I do say so myself, I'm proud of it. And uh, while not the easiest to um, like replicate, it's not like you can take the mask from this part and then just mask it over. You kind of have to do it individually, so that's a bit of a hassle, but it is the most accurate look, and I'm not the best at After Effects, so you could probably find a way to make it easier on yourself. But yeah. And for uh, members of my channel that have been around for a while, you might have noticed that I did stop uploading Blade and Sorcery videos. That's because they rolled out an update which made it super laggy and unplayable. Um, and I didn't want to go back to the old version because the new version had so many features. Um, so if I tried to record, it was unplayable, and just playing it on my own, it was still super laggy. But they just released a beta, which fixes all those problems, so I will probably have a Blade and Sorcery video out in the near future. Um, so yeah, if you like these tutorial-type videos, leave a like down below, leave a comment. Uh, I know most of my normal viewers don't even have After Effects, so this is kind of reaching out to a new audience. But if you like me if you liked my charisma in this tutorial then i'm the same person in all my other videos you might want to check those out or if you like the tutorial videos leave a comment down below leave a like and i'll make more so yeah that's pretty much it um that's another youtuber's outro uh see you guys in the, in the next video bye